Paul Rosen for the Rosen Report, powered by the National Benefit Authority, and now get an opportunity to interview not only an incredible athlete, but a good friend, Todd Kirstead from Bring Back the Game and Golf with Attitude. Great to have you on, buddy. Oh, thanks for having me. This is awesome. This, this set, you got it going on right here today. I'm telling you, man. It looks Tell good. Me. Almost feel like a million bucks. No, I do. Anybody know, I feel like a million bucks. I might not look like a million bucks, but I feel like a million bucks, and that's all that matters. Todd, Todd was born on uh, November the 13th, lucky day. Good old November, Friday the 13th. And a lucky Friday. Yeah, that's right. 1970, just a youngster in Toronto. Todd got his professional card, tour card, 1996 in golf. His father, he's an only child, but his father liked my father, and, uh, and that's how Todd and I really, uh, really became friends uh, at the beginning, is uh, Todd's father is, uh, his, was his chair, he was uh, his idol. He was my uh, mentor, somebody. he was unbelievable. Yeah, my dad gave me the unbelievable ability of playing sports at such a young age, uh, made me who I am on and off the golf course, and, uh, and, and miss him dearly every day, every time I I do an event or any time I hit a golf ball, you know, I know he's watching down and, and just checking things out. Yeah, and that, you know, uh, on, on a side note for a second, that, that's a really important thing I want, to, uh, I want to stress on people out there. Todd is extremely lucky. Uh, he had an incredible mentor in his life, his dad. Everybody that knows me knows that my dad is my mentor and my hero and always has been. I, I want you out there watching the Rosen Report to really, really... Um, I want to emphasize to you how important role models are in your life. Not sports people, but role models. You know, your father, your mother, your grandparents, your sister, it doesn't matter, but have a real good role model. Somebody that can teach you something, somebody that you're proud of, somebody that uh, will mentor you into the right way when possibly you're going down the, uh, the wrong path. Now, Todd, you played, everybody knows about Todd's golf mm. career, but uh, you played AAA hockey. Yep. You played Junior B with the Pickering Panthers. Yep. Hockey was your, 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 your start of love. It. Hockey was it. You know, I grew up playing golf all my life. You know, my dad had me out at such a young age um, hitting a golf ball. But at the time, it was an old man's game. You know, Tiger Woods wasn't there. You know, it, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't cool. And I grew up, you know, the rough, tough hockey player. I kind of, you know, I, I did whatever it took to win or whatever it took to be the best. And golf was always a part of my life because my dad, he had me playing out at such a young age. But it wasn't cool. So I grew up playing hockey, I grew up playing rugby, I grew up playing, you know, I love the contact sports and, and now I'm contacting a golf ball almost daily now and it's, uh, I'm pretty lucky, I really am. Well, I, I really want you to, uh, to stick around for the entire uh, show, The Rosen Report, um, because at the end, Todd's gonna show you something really, really cool. This guy, he makes the ball talk. He can do some unbelievable things. Now, Let's go back to hockey and yep. go back to our teenage years. I was born in 60, you were born in 70, kind of the heydays of hockey. You were born through the, the rough, uh, you know, Broad Street bullies, the big, uh, tough uh, exactly. Philadelphia Flyers. Go, go back to uh, maybe something that happened in the NHL that really molded you or made you think like, wow, this is, uh, this is a game I love. You know what? It was actually a really cool story is yesterday I did an event uh, for Falls View Casino and the hole before me, Daryl Sittler. Wow. You know, and, and I'm looking at him and you know, it's, it's with respect as you are when we, you know, we, we do have the privilege of knowing Mr. Bauer. Yes. But to me, it's, I, I went up and I said, Mr. Sittler, you know, we've met a couple times and, and I'm still that, you know, seven year old kid watching him in the gardens with, with uh, you know, setting the NHL record for, for one game with, uh, with points and, uh, you know, he was watching the Toronto Maple Leafs and, and the Boreas Salmings, the Mike Palmateers, the Ian Turnbulls. Yep. You know, those were, those, those were the, the heyday of hockey for me, you know. Um, and, and I still pinch myself every time I do a, a celebrity or a charity event. And there happens to be, um, you know, a guy that I had as hockey card. Yeah. I still look and I go, oh my God. And yeah. they're watching me hit a golf ball yeah. and they're excited about me. And they're like, Todd, can you teach me how to do that? And I'm going, yeah. whoa, you're Daryl Sittler. You know, yeah. or you're Mr. Bauer, or yeah. you're, and it's pretty cool. It really is. I pinch well, myself daily. Because we come from the same, uh, <clears throat> same era where, you know, we are in awe of them, and, and you know the, the opportunity that I had with, with Mr. Johnny Bauer, the, one of the greatest goalies 
of all time who really started his career in his late 30s, early 40s. And, and he came up to me, and he's in his 90s now, and said what an honor it is to meet me. And I'm like, oh, my God, man, this is Johnny Bauer, the legend. Uh, so, yeah, we're in that situation, and we're also in a situation where we really don't, we, 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 we try not to be in awe or ask for autographs. Right. But um, let me ask you a question. If you, uh, if you could go back all the things you've done over your life sport-wise and now the, the honor that you've been able to, uh, to have with, with showing so many people what you can do if you put your mind to it, one guy that, uh, or gal on the golf course that maybe you looked at and said, oh my God, man, I had no clue what a role model this person is. Oh my God. You know, um, there's so many, but there's one that I'm looking forward to. In another month, I'm heading down to um, St. Louis, and I'm actually doing a clinic with a guy that you might not be familiar with because I know hockey's your background, but I'm doing actual a golf clinic with a gentleman by the name of Lee Elder. Now, Lee Elder was the first African-American to play in the Masters. He was, uh, it's actually for a Teddy Ro or Ted Rhodes, they call him Teddy Rhodes, um, charitable golf tournament. Now, unfortunately, Teddy's passed away, but Ted was one of the first African-American golfers to play in the PGA. Now, those guys, you know, you hear about Jackie Robinson, you know, golf, unfortunately, you know, I love the game, but they're a few years still behind the times. You know, they're still uh, male-only golf courses. You know, it wasn't only until recently where, you know, some, un unfortunately, some races weren't allowed on the golf course. So, you know, we hear the stories about the Jackie Robinsons of the world where, you know, you can't imagine what it's like. And, and to be able to be privileged enough in another month to do a, a clinic with, with Lee Elder is going to be phenomenal. And I'm going to, I'm so excited to do it. And now this is a guy who, who changed the sport um, and allowed an, a, a race to play the game and open the doors. And I, I do know uh, the name Lee Elder. It kind of brings me back to, uh, to a name, Herb Carnegie. Exactly. I was very fortunate to uh, do some things with the late, great Herb Carnegie, who broke barriers for uh, African-Americans in the NHL. And now, hopefully, I think we've come to a point where a great athlete is a great athlete. And, and anybody out there who's looking at making athletics their, uh, their career, don't let race, don't let sexual orientation change you or make you turn away from something that you're great at. You know, the, the, this world is changing. We have an opportunity, Todd, you and myself, to help change occur and, and allow people of, of different uh, races or different sexual orientation to, to achieve greatness. And I think that's what it's all about. It's about uh, achieving greatness, doing, uh, doing whatever you can. Um, it's, uh, you know, we live in the great city of Toronto. You're from Toronto. Yep. And uh, let's talk a little baseball for a second. We've talked baseball before. Yeah. What, uh, what do you think about the Jays? Uh, you know what? What are they? They are 20 and 10. Yep. Um, I look at right now, the next 30 games is going to be interesting because they're not playing against um, the American League East rivals. They're playing right. against, I think this week, they're playing against uh, the Arizona. Arizona Diamondbacks. Yep. You know, they're going to be playing against the Chicago White Sox. They're going to be playing against teams that they're not competing against. I know, um, you know, when you're playing against teams in your division, it's more of a grind where maybe they can relax, not relax, but, but maybe not grind it out for the next 30 games. Yeah. So I think this next 30 games is going to be really pivotal for the Blue Jays. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, baseball is one of my true loves, and uh, I know Greg Zahn is a, is a great friend of yours, and I, I love Zahn. He's one of my favorites because he tells it like it is. Old school baseball, and there's a big pull here with old school and new school and young guys and, and, and brutal attitudes. Back in the day, if a pitcher hit a guy and it was deemed intentional, that player knew that the next at bat, that pitcher was throwing at him. And, and the game has kind of changed with this prima donna attitude with some of these guys that, uh, that, 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 that bring this, you know, uh, I am the greatest attitude, yet they have not proven anything. Where do you stand on that? To me, it's about accountability and respect. Not only respect for the other player, but respect for the game. You know you're getting, you know, if you get hit, you know, or your teammate's getting hit, you know you almost expect your pitcher to kind of 
throw at him as well, the opposite team, just as a payback, a one-upmanship. The same way, you know, when someone gets rocked in hockey, you know your teammates are going to be there. And to me, it's, it's, it's an accountability and it's a respect for the game, not only for the players, but for the game as well, too. So the, the prima donna aspect of it, the, the throwing at heads and, and not expecting any kind of retaliation, you know, we grew up in an era where, you know, it was, it was uh, an eye for an eye kind of thing, whether right. it was on the rink, whether it was in the diamond, whether it was, it was anywhere. So, yeah, um, yeah there, there's an accountability that still needs to take place because the game's going to get out of control. And saying that, we do not, and I'm going to speak for Todd, I know I can speak for Todd, we do not condone unnecessary violence. Throwing at a guy's head in baseball, terrible. This has been the Rosen Report with Todd Kerstad, powered by the National Benefit Authority. We will be back after these messages. The National Benefit Authority helps people with disabilities receive the disability tax credit from the Canadian government. We navigate all obstacles with you to determine your eligibility and position you best for a successful 10-year retroactive claim and receive up to $20,000 for an adult and $50,000 for a child. The National Benefit Authority went back 10 years and got me money I didn't even know was mine. Get the money you deserve. Call us at one 855-456-6688. Todd, I want to ask you uh, one question um, that, uh, that, that I think you're going to be able to really, uh, really change a lot of people's um, uh, mindset, maybe. Uh, if the Todd Kirstead right now, in his 40s, if the Todd Kirstead right now could go back and speak to 15-year-old Todd Kirstead, what would he tell him? Wow, that's, that's a tough one. I, I, I like that, though. You know what? To me, it's, you know, being, being 15 year old, whether it was back in the 80s, whether it's now, you know, there, there, there was always a little bit of a sense of entitlement. And, and to me, what I want to try and do is maybe look at the other person. You know, right now, you know, with yourself, you got to, you got to, uh, you were, unfortunately, you had a, a, a terrible incident that you, then blossomed with. Your life is now exploded after 39. You know, and when you take somebody that is in a situation and maybe look a little bit deeper inside of that person, instead of superficial, you know, look and, and figure out what's their story. Because everybody has a story. Whether it was someone on the street um, in Dundas Square, whether it is somebody sitting in a hospital, whether it is something in a, in a unique situation that might not be the norm to us, maybe we need to stop and think and go, really, what's, what's their story? Kind of thing and, and if we can figure out maybe what their story is maybe we all have a little bit more compassion to each other great answer todd we have come to my favorite part in the rosen report rapid fire i don't know strap in you got a seat belt there hang on you're putting me on the spot yeah. right uh, here okay strap in. here we go everybody if you're watching grab your popcorn because this is going to be great it's called rapid fire it's the rosen report we are going to have a great time now. The Rosen Report is powered by the National Benefit Authority. Todd, you ready? Strapped in? Ready to go. All right. Here we go. Favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Great movie. Yeah. Favorite restaurant? You know what? I am a roadhouse kind of guy. You know, when you can throw peanuts on the floor, yeah. get a good burger, that's what I love. All right. Yeah. Cool. Like it. Name of your first pet? You know what? This was back in the late 70s. Remember Chips? Yeah. I had a dog named Poncho. Beauty. There you go. Love it. Yeah. Poncho. Beautiful. First car. We're in Canada, so it's now called a Z28. When I'm in yeah. U.S., it was a Z28. Z28. Great car. A 1980 Z28, four-speed. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah, it was a muscle car. I'm telling you. Yeah. Muscle car for muscle guy. Well, I don't know about that. Favorite country? Canada. Okay. Easy. Okay. Um, favorite city? I love Toronto, but you know what? I love the East Coast. My parents are both from the Maritime. Right. I always say when someone described what's Maritime like, I always say you stop for directions and you're there for dinner. You know, but it's such a beautiful country. You know, you get people, the West Coast, you got views. I know we're not rapid fire here, man, but Canada's That's awesome. That's all right. You Canada's know what? Awesome. I, I have no issue with that because East Coast hospitality, 
is phenomenal. I had that situation in uh, Newfoundland where I, uh, I went to, uh, to, to talk to somebody about something and next thing you know, I'm at their house in their, living, in their kitchen uh, having uh, moose sausage. That's what it's all about, it was, uh, right? it was It was Getting unbelievable. Getting in and, uh, and kissing the cod. Yeah, favorite food. I love a good juicy burger. Juicy burger. Beauty kick saving a burger. Uh, favorite sport? I love hockey. I really do. Okay. The last thing. What would you change uh, about the world if you could change one thing? Mindsets. Mindsets of individuals um, from the I can't to I can. Everybody can do it. No matter what you can do, everybody can do it. You might not have the capacity to be at a high professional level, but everybody can do something. And it's changing that mindset, getting out of the rut, getting out of whatever, and just doing something positive. Well, you know what? You couldn't have said it better. Beautiful segue. Anything's possible. You can do anything. Todd Kerstet, joy to have you on always. Great friend, like a brother. Get up there and let's uh, show everybody the Tiger Woods special. You want to do the tap, tap, tap? Todd Kerstet special. You got it. You know what? This was made famous by Tiger Woods. Unfortunately, we're limited, uh, limited in space here. But all that we're doing right here... Tapping a golf ball. And I can stand here for hours. You know, some guys are really good, but we can stop a ball. Kind of we can do whatever we want. And the key to it, having fun. Absolutely. What Fantastic. It's all about. Hey, I want to thank my guest, Todd Kirstedt from Golf With Attitude and Bring Back the Game. This has been another segment of The Rosen Report, powered by the National Benefit Authority.